uh, look, um, me and Steve Chalk from First Light and David Frost are going down to Stringfellow's lap dance, the lap dancing that... Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm back here with uh, Queen Ricky. Are you enjoying being Queen? Not really, no. no. See, now, now you may knock them when they're up there on TV, but it's hard, isn't it? It's very difficult. It's a hard job. Work. So uh, you, don't have to watch, uh, you don't have to watch us if you want. You can watch anything you want. We've got TV for you. Do you want to watch BBC One there? There's a picture of a building and an old grey-haired man talking. He's Fausto Bertoniti. He's from the Italian <laughs> Communist Party. Right, ITV. Uh, David Dimble will be there, or talking to um, some bloke, Jack Cunningham. Boring, isn't it? Four, that's a picture of a mountain. Channel five, a truck. What, you, what, is, what would you prefer out of all those things? Haven't you got cable? Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's, quite, it's getting a bit cocky mm, now, this yeah. week. <laughs> People might rise up above you. Anyway, back to Stu. It's a shame we haven't got cable. I think there's a film called Skateboarder 2 on, um, <laughs> on Sky 1 at the moment. Anyway, now it's time for the Celebrity Gossip and Lies section of the show, where each week we fly in the face of the libel laws of this so-called country to find out the truth about a well-known celebrity. Yeah, and I tell you, we've got some really brilliant, juicy gossip this week. That's right. Um, it's the, um, the sweet story involves... Might have I am Roger Crowley, the wickedest man in the world. And there is no end to my wickedness. On Tuesday, I went to the supermarket. And I placed a jar of pickles in the marmalade section, shouting, let the mayhem commence. I hoped old blind Mrs. Rampton from number 19 would pick up the jar of pickles, mistaking it for marmalade. Thus... Unfortunately, one of the shelf stackers spotted the misplaced jar and put it back where it belonged. He will be punished. My plan had failed. But imagine if I had succeeded. Mrs. Rampton eating pickle on toast. Imagine her confused old face. Oh, yes. One day you will all see my power. No, no. Yes, honestly, that, that apparently is what Jimmy Savile and his brother get up to in their spare time. It's amazing. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? It's true, my sister's friend's brother works with someone who wants me. Oh, so um, want... And I'm just hearing in my ear that uh, some viewers may have lost transmission for about a minute and a half during that. So uh, we'll try and sort that out for next week. Oh, sorry about that. Men of Achievement 1974. This week's Man of Achievement 1974 is Thomas Matthew Ronan from Perth in Australia, writer of Mileskin Midas and recipient of the Australian Commonwealth Jubilee Literary Prize 1952. Men of Achievement 1974. Men of Achievement 1974 there, um, regular feature, and remember any of you can nominate a Man of Achievement 1974 for a future show, but remember, in order to qualify, they must appear in this book, Men of Achievement 1974, right? That's the... What, what are you doing there, Richard? No, I'm, just, to... I'm just sitting here what, minding I'm, my own business. I was trying to do a sensible I'm bit, not... and you're upstaging I'm me. I'm not upstaging you. This is just fashion. I'm just wearing this. It's a fashion statement, isn't it? It's cool. It's like the kind of thing Dave Stewart would do. No. It's cool. <laughs> it's the kind of thing Eddie Large would do, <laughs> it is. <laughs> upstaging it's, Sid Little, trying to do a serious song. I'm going to carry on wearing them, even though I can't hear a word you're saying. Take them well, off. Take them off. off. Okay. Anyway, um, joining us on the sofa to take a, a quick look at, at the Sunday papers, we welcome back our guest, Jenny and Claire. Yeah, give it up, Jenny. Thank you very much. What's got your satirical eye, your pride of your old eye? Uh, well, there was a little story in the News of the World about a man with one leg that was caught by his lover's husband and had to run away, but because he only had one leg, he couldn't run, he had to hop. <laughs> and he hopped for a mile and then fell down dead. <laughs> the comedy of cruelty the there. Uh, <laughs> popularised by Samuel Beckett. And I'm not sure if we... <laughs> we, uh, we were interested in the, What do you think about the boxing story? Women Excuse boxing. Yeah, women boxing. The British Board of Boxing Control says... Um, Women can't um, box because they uh, have PMT, which makes them aggressive. Which is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's this that. ridiculous myth about women suffering from PMT. We don't suffer, we enjoy it. I <laughs> see. Um, but I don't know why women have to sort of copy men's way of fighting. I think we fight very well in our old-fashioned way. I mean, those gloves are stupid because you can't get hold of hair, can you, with the gloves <laughs> on? Or get earrings out, because that's the way we fight. We've uh, seen, you've seen, Stuart, Stuart Lee has actually seen the, the winkies, I have to say, of two boxers, haven't you, yeah, Stuart? that's what right. Frank Bruno. I've stood next to in a toilet. Yeah. That's right. 
and uh, also um, Prince Nassim, which was less impressive. Yeah. But, uh, really? Small man. Yeah. Smaller than Frank Bruno. <laughs> smaller in smaller than Richard. Well, the, with the boxing thing, though, I think that in the late 20th century, women have as much right as men to be battered repeatedly around the head <laughs> until they become semi-unconscious. <laughs> if they want to. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. And I've yeah. seen uh, Dragar the Merciless doing a wee stew. Yeah, from from the Ice, ice Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. He wees ice. I know, yeah. so. <laughs> Richard, it's done, but no, but I'm going to get you this it's time. It's never water stew. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Damn him! <laughs> <Very> <laughs>